Hello everyone, I'm Dan. And Alice. And you're watching Plant Abundance on YouTube. Where you been? I'm back. <laughs> she's been missing in action. Some of you have all asked where she's been. Well, she's been here, but I'm the one who's out in the garden on a daily basis. She joins me from time to time. Today's one of those days that she gets to grace me with her presence as we're going to go about planting some fruit trees. I wanted to remind you guys, we are in fruit tree season right now. Hopefully you've got some local nurseries that are carrying an abundance of fruit trees. But if not, check online. There's a lot of suppliers online, lots of different varieties to be had. And really, this is a great year to get a fruit tree in the ground. I think when it's all said and done, 2021 is going to be a year to remember. It's going to be a wonderful year, full of abundance, full of just new enlightenment. So with that, Let's go get to planting. Yes, I'm ready. All right, so what we have here today are none other than the jujube tree. I've got two different varieties. One is the Lang, and the other one here is the Chico. And we already have two jujube trees growing over yonder. We have uh, a Sherman, or Sherwood it's called, and a GA866. And those two varieties have been wonderful. I look forward to adding two new ones into the garden. And why are we going big on the jujube tree? We got to talking about it and we were trying to figure out what is our absolute favorite fruit that we're growing right now. And that's kind of a big question. I mean, we've got over 35 fruit trees growing here now, a lot of different varieties. And we both came to the same conclusion that currently our favorite fruit tree, our favorite fruit producing tree is the jujube tree. So we got a couple young jujubes here now, sometimes they come potted up. You can also get them in bare root form online. And I already chose a spot for one of the trees over here, right on the edge of this hugel culture. So I'm gonna have to move back some of these greens and dig our hole. I just wanna show you guys how wonderful the soil profile is becoming here. There's a, a worm here. What I really wanna do is encourage you guys to not give up on building high quality soil. It's so important, it's the foundation to your garden, to the health of your plants, to the success you're gonna have. And it takes a little bit of time, but if you're patient and you add in the right materials, you're gonna end up with a high quality soil. That wasn't the case when we first moved in here. Yeah, it could have been worse, but mainly clay, a lot of debris and a lot of weeds. And over time, with sheet mulching, bringing in different organic materials and chopping and dropping, plus adding in compost tea, adding in worm castings, we're ending up with some tremendously healthy soil here. So why have I chose this particular location to plant the jujube tree? Well, jujube is like full sun. It's really important. And this area gets full sun. Although we are heading towards the most southern end of the property and you're gonna get the most sun on the northern end, that's generally speaking. If you got a large fence and it's creating a lot of shade on the southern end of your property then you're going to want to take that into account when you're planting anything small that it comes out past the shade line of your fence and in the southern hemisphere you can reverse everything i just said it's the opposite and it doesn't have to be perfect know this the sun rises in the east it goes down in the west as long as you're getting about five to eight hours of sunlight a day, most of your plants are gonna do just fine. Mainly what I'm talking about when I'm speaking about northern and southern ends is when you have taller fruit trees in your design, you don't want it to shade out your garden during the middle of the day. Unless of course, you live in a really hot climate, maybe Arizona or Nevada where, or Texas, where you're just getting scorching hot during the afternoon. And we do get scorching hot here as well, but if you live in an area that gets just tremendous amounts of sun, then you can actually use that to your advantage by having a nice shade tree on your southern end as well, helping to create patches of shade for more of your uh, cooler weather crops like salads, brassicas, uh, kales, you know, that sort of thing. So now it's always a great idea, although not completely necessary to add in some nutrients to your planting hole, give a really good start to your plants. So what I have here, is a super soil blend that I put together. And what's in here is some biochar that I made here on site. And I charged it up mainly using some fish pond water. I also put in some worm castings and some rock dust minerals. And then I mixed into that some potting mix just to give it some more bulk and add in some other nutrients that were in the potting mix 
there was more worm castings. I think there's bat guano and some broken down wood products. So this is just a great additive to add to your hole, but you don't got to get as fancy as this. This is just over time, a different system that I've developed. I've made other videos showing you how you can use all sorts of materials, banana peels, eggs, sardines, you name it. But I'm gonna add a little bit of that into the hole and then I'm also gonna throw in some Epsom salt. I'd say that was about three tablespoons. Now Epsom salt is magnesium sulfate. It's not like table salt, okay? And what this is gonna do is not only add some more minerals, magnesium and sulfur to this hole, but it's gonna also help this plant that we're plugging in to uptake all the different nutrients that it's gonna find in the soil here and everything we added in. It opens up the pathways for the plants to uptake nutrients. So when planting a potted fruit tree, it's really important that you tease the roots. You don't wanna break the roots. If a little bit of breakage happens, that's okay, but you really just wanna stop those roots from spinning around in circles. So you just wanna loosen it up, go around the edge too. It's just gonna stimulate those roots to start growing outward instead of in a circular motion. And the longer a plant is in a pot, the worse it gets at some point. If it's just completely root bound, all you're seeing is white roots all around, it's probably not gonna survive. So as I'm putting this plant into the hole, I'm looking at how high it's gonna come up above the ground. Now, really you can just go with, when it comes to a potted plant, just go with the same level. But I like to add about an inch or two to that as well, bringing it above the level, because over time it's gonna sink down a little bit as the soil that we just took out of here and we're adding back in starts to settle so I always recommend going up a little bit never burying too deep that that could be really bad you can end up getting uh, trunk rot on your plant but if you go a little bit above level on the soil you're not going to have that issue and it's going to just aid with drainage so I like that about there the soil level is about right there so it's a little high so once we backfill this and we put mulch around it, it's gonna have almost a little bit of a, a little hill. But then over the course of the next year or two, it's gonna sink down and become level. So that's a little tip for you when you're planting perennials. And soon I'll make a metal tag for this tree and I'll also mark it down on my gardening diagram so I always remember what variety I have where. But for now, we'll just put the tag next to it, and that's the laying. So now I'm gonna water this in deeply. And the purpose is not just to hydrate the plant that we just transplanted, but also to eliminate any air gaps because we've disturbed all this soil. There's a lot of different air gaps in here. Um, of course, we want a little bit of aeration, but by doing a deep watering, that's always better than stomping around the plant to compact it in. It's just gonna help to get all that soil mended together around the plants and the plants roots. When I do do watering in my garden, it's mostly with just city tap water that does have chloramines in there. It's not ideal, but I don't use any filter on my water supply and I'm getting good results. So my goal is to just always water less and instead build quality soil that retains moisture and put down mulch that keeps the moisture in and allow those rain waters to come in and saturate in the winter. But when we do get towards the summertime, definitely I have to do some watering. Just gonna take some of this mulch material here. Got all kinds of stuff in here. Pine needles, leaves of different plants breaking down, wood chips, and that's it that plant is gonna grow and supply us with food for the next 30 plus years, I hope. And that's called a wonderful investment in my opinion. So what's your favorite part about the jujube fruit? Why do you like it the most out of all the different fruit that we grow in our garden? Well, I like it because it's so delicious. And you know, while I am biting, it's so crunchy. And once you eat, 
you never stop. You gotta be liking it. How about when it begins to actually dry and, and become wrinkly? Do you like it at that stage too? Oh yeah, it's kind of figs. I like it too. It reminds you of a fig? Yes. <laughs> because jujube is known as a Chinese date, but it's it's not quite like a date and it's not quite like a fig. It just resembles it. But it reminds you of a fig when it becomes wrinkly? Yes. Okay. Every single bite. <laughs> you know, the wrinkle is kind of figs and I like it. I personally love the flavor. It's amazing. Uh, there's many different stages which you can enjoy the jujube. Sorry about the wind it's coming through. It's a windy day today, but we're still getting out and getting some stuff done in the garden. Every day is an opportunity to plant more abundance. But back to the jujubes. Uh, there's many different stages when you can eat them. They're green. They start to turn a brownish chocolatey color. And then they become wrinkle and fully matured and resemble a date. And I love them at every stage. My favorite is right in between when it's gone from green to brown. So delicious. It's got, to me, it reminds me of a caramel flavor. And just like Alice said, it's one of those fruits where you eat one and you want another and you want another. And another cool thing about it is it contains a large seed right in the center. And a lot of the flesh of the fruit kind of sticks to that seed. So you end up kind of chewing on it, sucking on it like a candy after you eat the fruit itself. So it's kind of like there's a little candy center as well that you can enjoy after eating the fruit. But just absolutely delicious. It can be grown in so many areas throughout the United States. It's cold hardy all the way down to zone uh, 5, USDA climate zone, although probably not going to want to grow it in that area. More like a zone 6 through 9 is going to be the best. It does like long, hot growing seasons. So if you've got a short growing season, you're not going to have as much success. It also likes a lot of dry weather, dry hot weather during the fruiting season. During the rest of the year, we've had great success watering it just like all our other fruit trees. Now there is a lot of information online that some of it's kind of conflicting. So I'm a big fan of just getting out there and planting things and observing and coming to your own conclusions. So for us, in our experience, uh, it handles water just like the rest of the garden would throughout most of the season. But towards the end, if you can back up and allow that plant to just uh, be in a dry climate, it's going to do the best for you as far as fruiting is. So you may have issues if you live in an area that gets summer rains, uh, that has a lot of humidity. You may have issues with the fruit setting in abundance. But if you live in areas of California, Oregon, Arizona, Nevada, Texas, these are going to be Oklahoma. These are going to be prime locations to grow jujube bees, <laughs> to grow jujubes. So keep that in mind. But if you're not in one of those areas, don't let that stop you from trying, I say. I say try and experiment and see what does well. Every yard's going to have its own little set of microclimates as well, so keep that in mind. You may live in a specific climate zone, but you may have things within your yard that alter that climate zone. You may have a pond, a body of water that creates more of a humid environment, retains some of that heat, stops freezes from ha happening in that exact area. You may have a big brick wall that absorbs sun all throughout the day and emanates that and radiates that heat throughout the night. So there's a lot to be experimented with in the garden. But jujubes are a fun tree to grow. They're deciduous. They lose their leaves in the winter time and they can get quite tall. They can get 15, 20 feet tall. I've heard they can even get as large as 30 feet. So for me, I want to keep it pruned down because I've seen examples of people keeping them pruned at even four feet. So I took a good six feet off this jujube this year and it is kind of hard to find exact pruning information on this tree but I have come to some conclusions here this tree really does grow similar to a grapevine its spur pruning is one of the ways that you're going to create an abundance of fruit on the tree so the fruit itself actually sets on the new growth so the the growth that occurs this year is where the fruits gonna set now each one of these side branches that I left off the scaffold branches here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight nodes. I pruned them down to as small as two nodes, thinking that was best before, but I think this is gonna actually be the best. Something like this, maybe five, six nodes. And I just kind of spaced it out. I took out the upright growth and I have a fruit tree pruning video coming up soon 
I know I keep mentioning it, but it's a lot of work, guys. It's a, it's a lot of information, and I'm trying to condense it so it's not boring. But all this upright growth I took out, and the jujube has kind of a whimsical, almost gangly type growth habit. So you can kind of hone that in a bit with proper pruning, and you definitely want to take some of that height out. Last year, these trees got really tall, and although beautiful, and they set a lot of fruit up there, it just made it more difficult to harvest. So this is right here, the Sherwood. And then over here, we've got the GA866. Both lovely varieties. Something else worth mentioning if you do grow these trees is that they put out root suckers that grow at the base of the tree, several feet away from the tree even. You can pull those up and get rid of them rather easy. So just keep that in mind though. If you do plant one, you're probably not gonna to wanna to do it too close to the fence line. And although jujubes can be grown from those root suckers and seeds, they're never gonna be true to the variety of the mother plant. Nearly all jujube that taste good are grafted, but you can take those rootstocks, you can transplant them and graft onto that with a piece of wood from up higher on the tree and you can propagate it that way. The seeds themselves, you can experiment with it, you can plant them out and see what they turn into, but most of the time you're gonna get real small fruits that don't have much flavor. They're just not very appealing. So getting a known variety, one that's been grafted is gonna be the way to go. And jujubes are all self-fruitful. They don't need a companion in order to set the fruit, but anytime that's the case with trees, if you do have a variety in that same family that's flowering at the same time, you are gonna get the benefit of cross-pollination and should get a heavier fruit set. So I always recommend starting with two jujubes if you can, but if, if all you can afford is one or you only got room for one, that's all you need. So you wanna plant the next one? Yeah. You're gonna dig gonna the hole and everything? Okay. I'm gonna dig it. I won't stop you. I kind of want to do it in alignment with the other one there. So like right here, let's dig this aloe vera out and I'll transplant that somewhere else. Yeah. Perfect. Little aloe vera plant. And also, let's take this artichoke out. We'll transplant that somewhere else as well. How about a thumbs up everybody for my wonderful wife here helping me out in the garden, doing some planting today. And also for all her wonderful camera work that she's been contributing on the channel to lately. I'm gonna help you while you're digging it up, I'm gonna pull up on it. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, deep tap root on these artichokes. And we will transplant that in the yard. There's actually, there's actually several plants all bunched up here that we can transplant. Yeah, I've been composting in place is what I call it. This is almost like a little island. It was elevated over the rest of the garden because I'd been sheep mulching year after year. And yeah, this is turning out to be some of the best soil in the garden over here now. okay
Wisconsin. Good job. Awesome. So we'll always remember now that these two jujube trees, I planted one, you planted the other, yes. in 2021, February 2021. This is like our Valentine's Day planting, yes. which is tomorrow. So we'll always remember uh -huh. that. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. Hope you found this video helpful or entertaining in some way. Just a quick reminder, go out and purchase yourself some fruit trees. Get them in your garden this year. You'll be happy you did. Until next time, this is Dan and Alice from PlantAbundance.com. Take care. We'll be talking to you again soon.